Hall of Fame Day is approaching in all month on Hot Stove. Keith Costas mans Keith the Hall of a Fame lot of love today. spotlight. A lot of love. Uh, well, I mean, he's got some interesting stuff on one particular Hall of Fame candidate, Todd Helton, whose candidacy, I think, is moving the right direction, maybe not all the way to 75%, but tell us about the uh, Rockies all-time first baseman, Keith. Yep, well, we'll start as we always do with the Hall of Fame tracker. You mentioned the 75%, Matt. He's just, no <laughs> he's just north of it now. Yes, the Peyton Manning references. We get it coming full circle here, H. <laughs> At 78% now, you'd expect it to come down a little bit, so he's probably going to be right on the border. But we talked the other day with Chef about moving around from team to team and not really having one fan base to advocate for him. That's obviously not the case with Helton. As you take a look at guys who've played 2,000 games with one franchise in the last 40 seasons or so, and it's a pretty small group of guys, and they're all going to go to the Hall of Fame if they're not there already, save for Bernie Williams. So Todd Helton as a Rocky, does it help in the voting? Does it help in perception? Yes. But in my opinion, I think it's an actual valid criteria to elect somebody to the Hall of Fame. It's not the only reason you put them in, obviously, but to me that's worth something if you hold that kind of place in the history of one single franchise. Now, the bigger problem in my eyes for Helton is not the home road or anything that normally gets talked about. It's that he had a short peak, but you look at that peak, and it was incredible. A 349 average for a five-year span, and the important number on the bottom there, Park adjusted the OPS plus, only Barry Bonds and Albert Pujols, the two best hitters of the last who knows how many years, were better than him in the National League over that span. So how about what he did on the road over that same five-year period? Take a look at the best comp for him on the road. Alex Rodriguez on the road, basically a dead ringer for Todd Helton over that five-year wow. stretch. Now, Matty, I'll tee you up on this because you had firsthand experience with it. We've talked about it before, but you got a close-up look at what this guy could do outside of Colorado. Look at these numbers at Petco, the anti-cores, so to speak. 76 games there, nobody had a higher batting average, hit for plenty of power. So, Matty, like I said, you got to see this guy up close and personal on the road, and he didn't seem to have any problem hitting in that marine layer in San Diego. Uh, yeah, I love the comp there, Keith, because those peak years included uh, some time here at Petco Park as a visiting player. This place didn't open until 2004, which was on the kind of the downward slope of the peak years, if you will. But if you look at, at the, the total home road splits for, for Helton in his career, it, it paints an unfair picture because it looks like the course field effect was a big deal for him. But Keith's point is so well taken because during his prime, the home road splits were not as dramatic, and he was every bit as good away from Coors as he was in altitude. So that's, that's a really good point. He was great at places like Petco Park, like AT&T or Pac Bell, which is what it was called in the day. Uh, he was a guy, Todd Helton, that for me, maybe five years ago, I was eh, not nonplussed about his candidacy. Now I say he, if I had a ballot, he'd, he'd be a guy that I would vote for. Larry Walker kind of paved the way for Rockies players around whom the conversation had always been, oh, but the altitude. Forget about that, man. This guy's a Hall of Famer for me. Well, I, I, I always think, what do you do in your generation? You hear me say this a million times. And what's unique about you? He's one of the greatest hitters of all time. Can't argue it. Ball, bat to ball skills, everything. He's one of the greatest hitters of all time. And Todd Helton, when he played, was one of the best players of his time. So to me, I, I think it's been well overdue him getting the just due for how great a player he was. And I, I don't know. I, I think he's a Hall of Famer for me. Um, I don't have really have much more you. to say. Than I got that. you. Well, it should be really a no-brainer. None of us really have a say anyway. We just True. add the conversations. Joel Sherman is a voter. Uh, I know that Joel will not reveal his ballot until after Hall of Fame Day on the 24th, and uh, I commend you for that. But just give us some talking points on Helton and where you think your contemporaries view him. Yeah, I think he's a borderline candidate, and I think the voting reveals him as a borderline candidate. I think two things have helped him recently, and you mentioned one of them, Larry Walker getting in, uh, a player who played a good deal of his career at Coors Field. I think we should all listen to our very esteemed colleague, Dan O'Dowd, who was the general manager uh, of the teams for Todd Helton in Colorado, and talk about how tough it is to play on the road after playing games in Colorado. Like, you get a great advantage at home, but it is very difficult when the ball then breaks normally, quote-unquote, 
uh, it, at sea level uh, in other the 29 other ballparks and how tough it is on your body. And this guy did play a long time. I think the other thing that helps him is the, the recent committee just put in Fred McGriff. I think you can make this question. Who had a better baseball career, Fred McGriff or Todd Helton? I think Todd Helton would stack up well with Fred McGriff if you play the game of who else is in. But I think his career also is very much like Don Mattingly's I'm in that, that there was a high peak and then a back injury that kept it from staying a high peak for a long time. Mattingly hasn't gotten in. <clears throat> and one of, excuse me, and one of the games I play all the time is like if I could only vote in Don Mattingly, Todd Helton, or Keith Hernandez, how would I do that? I I'm not history. sure that Todd Helton would get in ahead of Mattingly. I'm not sure he'd get in again ahead of Hernandez. Those guys aren't in. I, you know, and look, I'll even use, I just thought of this when Keith Costas put up this uh, uh, graphic about guys who played 2,000 games for one team. Better career, Bernie Williams or Todd Helton? Bernie Williams fell off the ballot after two uh, times on the ballot. He had less than 5% the second time. I'm not sure Todd Helton had a better baseball career than Bernie Williams. Mm -hmm. All right. You, that's an interesting. interesting discussion for sure. Many ways to view wow. this. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, right now, as Keith showed us on the tracker, tracking over 75%, but uh, those numbers usually come down when all the ballots come in on the 24th, and we'll learn more about it. It, on it that is day. so much about timing, too. I mean, I'm looking at Scott Rowland, Todd Helton at the top of the ledger right now. Yeah. With all the guys cleared off the ballot, it pushes them to the top. Yeah. If you take this, this poll five years ago, they don't get a sniff with all the players that were in that bunch of trying to get in. So now the voters have cleared those guys off their ballots, and this opens the door for these guys. There's yeah. no way when, when Scott Rowland retired, you're sitting there going, he's going straight to Cooperstown. Yeah. He is now because that has been cleared off and his, his numbers rise. I'm not saying he wasn't a good player, but when you're sitting there going, Scott Rowland, Hall of Famer compared to George Brett, all these other guys, he wasn't in. I feel you. Now he's in. Yeah. You know, so I, I think a lot of it has to do with timing.